Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to my unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy Gear smartwatch. I got this in the after Christmas sale. Of course, there is really no after Christmas sale from many hardware manufacturers, but it just so happens that a lot of people get Christmas presents that they're unsatisfied with, and you can find deals on mainstream technology products if you're vigilant enough and look in the right places. And that includes graphics cards, because if people are getting new graphics cards for Christmas, they want to sell their old ones. So there's going to be a lot of pre-owned graphics cards on eBay and I've never had a problem selling my graphics cards on eBay. I've never bought a pre-owned graphics card on eBay before but I've always received positive feedback for the graphics card I sold on eBay and a lot of subscribers who have been with me for a while know that I've gone through graphics cards really quickly and the way that I'm able to do that is I sell my old graphics cards before they depreciate in value. So definitely right now, if you want mainstream tech products, there are a lot of good deals floating around from people who are dissatisfied with their holiday presents. But for more, like for less mainstream and more niche products, it's probably going to be a lot harder to find deals from individual sellers. But I got this $60 off the price and it, has, it hasn't even been worn. So without further ado, let's take a look at the watch. The watch itself features a camera, an AMOLED screen, and a processor that can run Android 4.3 apps, but whether that processor can be overclocked or not is yet to be determined. So here we see the screen in all of its beauty. It has a resolution of 320 by 320, and the camera is embedded into the strap. And I got black because the camera is a lot less conspicuous on this strap. If it was a white strap, it would be extremely noticeable, but... This uh, The camera protruding is an aspect of its design that I don't really like. If they made the, uh, the top part of the strap be a higher profile, then the camera would be a lot less conspicuous. The strap itself is of durable quality. It's kind of like a fitness slash casual wear hybrid because um, you can't just swap out the strap. So they need to have the strap be um, accessible for a lot of different uses and it's adjustable based on notches within the strap. Also in the box is a charging cradle, the charger itself that uses a micro USB and the manual. So that's it for what's in the box or is it? Yes, that is it for what's in the box. And the Samsung Galaxy Gear is only compatible with phones that are from Samsung that run Android 4.3. So that's the Note 2, the Galaxy S4, the Galaxy S3, and the Note 3. And this exclusivity is part of the reason for the early lack of success of the Samsung Galaxy Gear because it not only hurts consumers that don't have a Samsung phone, it also hurts phone um, owners who are Samsung phone owners because that kind of locks them into using only Samsung phones in the future if they want compatibility with their Galaxy Gear. So I'm going to go ahead and boot up the gear and give you a really quick rundown of its initial features. Okay, so I've used the phone for several hours now, and the first thing I did was install a custom background using a picture of my computer and an overlay of a clock and the date. And next, I tried to use the Power Rangers communicator ringtone, but this phone only comes with three ringtones by default, and Samsung doesn't have an app that allows you to set custom ringtones. So I had to take a crash course in the Android software development kit to learn how to push MP3s onto the notifications folder on your phone. And finally, I'm able to use the Power Rangers communicator as my ringtone. Okay, I've managed to use some of the other basic functions pretty easily. It's very intuitive to make calls and receive calls and read text messages. You can't send text messages outside of using S Voice. I have S Voice mapped to double tap the button on the side, but I'm not going to do that in this video because S Voice is going to take microphone priority. I'm recording this video with my Galaxy S3 and uh, you guys wouldn't hear any more audio for the rest of the video because S Voice would immediately take priority of the microphone and it won't give back priority until I stop the video and start it again. But moving on, the apps are very limited right now. On the App Store, there's probably 30 apps that you can download and 10 of them are just skins for the phone, but that's an aspect of phone development that I respect. Did I say, did I mention the Galaxy Gear as a phone? Okay, I apologize, smartwatch, 
but phone just rolls off the tongue a lot easier. Um, and that's an aspect of mobile OS development that I really like and mobile OS hardware that I really like in that the developers make phones and smartwatches and other high-end devices have an overkill amount of hardware compared to the amount of software that is available in the hopes that the public will develop software that takes full advantages of the capability of the hardware. But that's the exact opposite of console development, whereas the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 use hardware that is already outdated. And I was watching CES coverage, the NVIDIA Tegra K1 tablet is running 192 cores, CUDA cores or something like that. So it's basically GeForce merged with a tablet and it's ridiculous. So by next generation, the NVIDIA Tegra K2 is going to be basically PS4 and Xbox One graphics at 720p on a 5-inch display. And gosh, like the Xbox One and the PS4 are already using outdated hardware. But the reason why the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 lasted so long was that Sony and Microsoft took a loss on the hardware and they were losing money with each unit sold, but they put in an amount of hardware in the systems that was like on par with some like, you know, pretty beastly PCs at the time. And because of that, it was in it was enough of an overhead that developers could take advantage of the system capabilities for years. And, you know, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 obviously aren't doing that. So what was the point of getting the Galaxy Gear when there is obviously very limited support for it and there is very limited use for it? Well, I like to be an adopter of early technology. That's why I got an Android, I'm um, sorry, not an Android, an Oculus Rift development kit, even though I don't want to develop software for it. I want to see where the technology is in its current state and, you know, make a review for my subscribers. And that's the philosophy I have behind getting a phone. Uh, sorry, I said phone again. A smartwatch like the Galaxy Gear. And, well, really quick side note, Pebble just announced, announced a higher-end version of their phone. It has a nicer band and it has a nicer functionality, but it also doesn't have a color screen like that on the Galaxy Gear, but you can also use it with other devices. Um, but I like head turning technology and there is a price of admission, obviously. I paid $240 for this watch, but you know, I like to inform consumers about the possible benefits of technology like this and make suggestions on how better this technology could be used in the, fe in the future. But uh, to make a proper assessment of how this device integrates into my everyday life, I have to give it about a month of using it all the time. And by then, you'll know my final thoughts on the Galaxy Gear and whether it's a worthwhile purchase. But this is definitely an avenue of technology that I want to see develop further. There is going to be a lot of screen area on your body, like on your wrist, and then with Google Glass, you can be sure I'm going to pre-order Google Glass. You have a lot of screen space all over your body. So I very much hope that you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for my final thoughts on the Galaxy Gear. My name is David, and I'll see you next video.